So this week we're going to talk about form. In art, a form is a three-dimensional shape or the illusion of a three-dimensional shape. A form can be any object that has volume with length, width, and depth. Or a form can be a painting or a drawing of an object that looks like it has volume. Artists use different techniques to create the illusion of the three-dimensional forms in two-dimensional spaces. Here, you can see the use of cross-contour lines that create the illusion of the hand and the use of one-point perspective that makes each of the letters look like they have volume. Here, you can see the artist added value and linear perspective to create the illusion of form in this drawing. Since we have already experimented with creating the illusion of form, this week we're going to create an actual form. But before I talk about the project, I want you to watch this short clip about a current working artist, Bernard Williams, and how he experiments with creating forms. We're here on the west side of Chicago to see Bernard. Bernard is a sculpture artist. He makes everything from small scale to giant scale. Let's go check out his space. I started doing art in, uh, in grade school, um, drawing from comic books. I studied painting. My, uh, uh, my degrees are in painting and drawing. But I started making sculpture after graduate school. So I really kind of introduced that to my practice after, after finishing school. I think of what I'm doing now really as, as kind of experimenting in the same way that scientists do in, in laboratories. You know, they don't always know what they're going to get at the end of, a, of an experiment. So what are we looking at here as far as uh, what you're creating? Well, for me, this is, this is the laboratory. Yeah, yeah. This is where I do my experiments, um, my research. Sure. Uh, and come up with my um, uh, discoveries, you might say. A lot of what's happening now in, in my studio is a lot of experimentation. Um, and and a lot of work with found objects and a lot of uh, work with new materials that I haven't used before. Again, these were found, found objects, um, broken bottle tops, uh, toy parts. Yeah. This one actually moved. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stuff I get at the thrift store. Um, Tools, that was a screwdriver, knives, um, part of a comb over here. It's just neat seeing, I mean, like you're talking about, where you're finding kind of, you know, the materials or the inspiration. Is you know, it's half the time we walk, over, you know, just walk right by half this stuff and yeah. not know what to do with it, but it's yeah. cool. And that's just like a glimpse into your process. And right. like you see something there that nobody else is seeing. As a creator and that whole process... You know, that's really evolved over over a long period of time for me personally as an artist. You know, initially I was very interested in, in drawing and, and, you know, kind of representing things in the world. But over time, you know, as I kind of explored the, what it means to be an artist and what kind of things other artists are doing, uh, I think my interest really expanded beyond just... Um, uh, representation and I think I've really become uh, very much interested in really connecting with the world around me and the things I see out in the world I'm always looking for something that doesn't cost me a whole lot of money uh, and I can kind of acquire without too much difficulty so I've worked with broken glass um, again cardboard paper uh, uh, I think really you can start by just kind of looking around you and, and you know, grabbing things that um, are available. So he's pretty unique, right? He uses all kinds of different materials. And like he said, he likes to use things that don't cost him a lot of money, which is what we're going to try to do this week as well. So let's check out our two options that you have this week. So your first option is to create an animal sculpture made from cardboard. 
This is following Bernard Williams' method of using supplies that don't cost a lot of money. We all have cardboard lying around, even if it's just an old box of cereal that we can use. And we're gonna use those pieces to create an animal of your choice. And I'm gonna show you how to do that using what's called a slot construction method. Your second option this week is to create a found object last name sculpture. As you can see, I found different things throughout my house to create and build the different letters in my last name. I found string, I found Pez, uh, I used tools, I used glue sticks. Um, I really like my R, how I found the walkie talkie and put it upside down with the pen to create that. I want you to be inventive and creative. Find different things with variety in color and shape and size, and I want you to have fun with this. For both of these, you will photograph your final results and attach it to the Google Classroom. So here's a video now to show you how to do option one with the animal sculpture. All right, so we are gonna learn how to make our cut out animals out of cardboard. You don't need any tape or glue to be able to put these together, so let me show you how. First, the materials that you're gonna need are a stack of cardboard of any kind. Um, you can use cardboard from a box that you would get in the mail. You can use a cereal box. It's really totally up to you. I would recommend having scissors, but if you really want to do this project and you don't have scissors, just neatly rip the cardboard. And one way that you can do that is as you're doing it, you can kind of, um, if this is my line, I can kind of create holes along that line that will help me rip the cardboard itself. Let me go all the way down. And then when I go to rip it, I just put my finger right against that line and it makes it a lot better than if I just tried to rip it. So it's not as neat as scissors, but it definitely can happen. All right, and then if you have any color options um, for my seal, all I did was I used white, gray, and black crown, and I was able to make it that gray color um, and show the details that I wanted to. So there are two methods to do this. There's, we're teaching you, I'm teaching the slot method, and so there's a way to do it to where you have two slits and you kind of marry them together, and then you have the option to just do one slit and have that come into the original shape. So in order to do it to where you have them um, coming together, I'm going to make a slit into one side and you never want to go all the way through because it'll make it too weak. And then I want to do the same thing on the other one. Now, in order to make this easier, notice that I made just two cuts right next to each other. And then I'm just going to pull out that little extra cardboard and same thing out that little extra cardboard that just gives you a little bit of space to make it neater and so then you push it down and then you have your married cardboard so you have a bridge like that and again that's what I did in the front with my fins or arms or whatever you call them on a seal and then the other method that I have is to just cut a slit in the part that you're adding so for example, this would be in the legs of an animal or in this one, the fin. And I would just take this and again, to make it easier, just cut that little bit of a slit to where you can pull it out. It doesn't need to be that big. And then you can put it right there, kind of angle it and play it how you want to. And that's how you would do that. So there's not a right way or a wrong way. You just kind of have to play with it and experiment. And the cool thing is that I have a bunch of cardboard so I can try it. If it doesn't work in that first experimentation, then I can just try it again. So now I have my drawing. Um, that's kind of what you need to do first is you need to come up with what animal you're gonna do. Now, if we look at this, the main line that I need to do on my cardboard is this. I'm not worried about my legs right now. I'm not worried about the detail in the face. I just want the shape. So I've already gone in and I'll show you so that you can see it in Sharpie. 
and there's my line. Now, when cutting with cardboard, I find to cut smaller areas at a time. So instead of getting really awkward, if it feels awkward, then cut some of it off. And I can just make those little slits and make it a lot easier. So now I have my body all cut out and kind of see what we're working with. And now I have my legs. So for legs for basic animals, um, the main thing you want to think about is height. So how tall you need the legs. For a fox, it's really short. So I'm just making small legs. So I already pre-drew my legs. And what you'll see is that my back legs are slightly longer because this is higher. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my legs. Now with this, remember I'm cutting my slit. And this is all experimentation. I have not done the fox before, so there's going to be things that I have to alter and change. And I think because the legs are so short here, I need to actually cut in to the body to make it work. doesn't look like it's standing up. And again, I'm going to cut my slip. I always like to test it first to see if I really need other steps. And if I want to, I can add the color. So for this, you know, I mess a little bit. I need orange and white. I already have white. So I'm gonna start by just coloring orange. I know for foxes, they have that white belly. If you have paint, feel free to add paint on here. I find that the crown does a pretty good job of coloring and covering up. something like an angle like this and submit it. Good luck guys, let me know if you need help. <laughs>